The blessed sacred assembly of the Passover has come. Today, thinking about God's grace for opening the way for us to become God's children, let us take some time to study the Bible with the sermon titled, The Passover and the New Covenant. First, let's take a look at the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 11. Chapter 6 verse 11 reads, But you, man of God, flee from all this, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of. What should we take hold of? The eternal life to which you were called. We must never fail to take hold of the truth of eternal life while living our lives of faith. This is God's will, His command, and His teaching written in the Bible. So, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 25, doesn't the Bible testify that eternal life is a very precious promise granted by God? Let us turn to the book of 1 John. The book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 25. Chapter 2, verse 25 reads, And this is what He promised us, even eternal life. In the previous verse we read, it is written that we must pursue faith, righteousness, and gentleness. However, God says that above all else, we must take hold of eternal life without fail. The Bible lets us know that we have been called by God, and we have been chosen by Him for this reason. Also, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 25, it is written, This is what God promised us, even eternal life. Again, God places emphasis on eternal life. Then, why does God tell us to take hold of eternal life? The answer for this question is found in Revelation chapter 21, isn't it? Let us turn to the book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 reads, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Doesn't a new heaven and a new earth mean heaven? For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men, and He will live with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, God says there will be no more mourning or crying or pain in the new heaven and the new earth. What is the first thing he will get rid of in that world? The first thing he will get rid of is death. What does it mean to get rid of death? It means that He will give us eternal life. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 John chapter 2, and Revelation chapter 21, we can find the answer to the question of why God tells us to take hold of eternal life. No one can go to the kingdom of heaven without eternal life. We can go there only if we have the promise of eternal life. Then who are the people in this world who have received the promise of eternal life? The people who have received the promise of eternal life from God while living on this earth. The place where only these people can go is the new heaven and the new earth. The eternal kingdom of heaven prepared by God, isn't it? 
Therefore, it doesn't make sense at all to insist that people who have not received eternal life can go to heaven. Heaven is a place where there is no death. So if anyone dies after living for 20 years or 30 years, such a place cannot be heaven. The eternal kingdom of heaven is a world where there is no more death or mourning or crying or pain. It is written in the Bible that God came to this earth to take us to this kingdom of heaven and that we have been called and chosen by God to receive eternal life. Let's take a look at John chapter 6, verse 45. In John chapter 6, verse 45, it says, It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Of course, the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, contains the teachings given by God. What this verse really means here is that God will come to this earth in the flesh and teach us directly. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from Him comes to me. In other words, Jesus Christ came from heaven to this earth to teach us and return to heaven. If this is the case, we who believe in God must go to heaven too. The first prerequisite for entering the kingdom of heaven is that we must receive the promise of eternal life. Let us see God's teaching on how we can receive the promise of eternal life by continuing with verse 53. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no... What do you not have? You do not have life in you. No matter how accomplished a person is, how much fame a person has, or how much knowledge and wealth a person has, they cannot go to heaven without eternal life. Let's continue with verse 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has, what do they have? Eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Here, we can see that God has promised to give eternal life to anyone who eats Jesus' flesh and drinks his blood. God himself, who created the heavens and the earth and everything in them, with his words, taught these words when he came to this earth in the flesh. Regardless of how good people's faith may be, or how great the gospel path they may have walked, if they do not have eternal life, will they be able to go to the kingdom of heaven? No, they will not. No matter how much faith people have, no matter how much devotion they have put forth, and no matter how much effort they have made, they cannot go to heaven without eternal life. Since we must receive the promise of eternal life from God, He Himself came to this earth and left us His teaching here so that we may know how we can receive eternal life. Isn't the teaching He left us called the New Covenant? Let us go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 22, verse 19. It says, And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is, what is this bread? My body given for you. What did Jesus say the Passover bread is? Jesus said, This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20 reads, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. Here, the cup he was referring to was the cup that contained the Passover wine, saying, this cup is, what is this cup? The new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. In Luke chapter 22, verse 19 through 20, we can see that Jesus took the Passover bread, saying, its true meaning is his body, that is, 
his flesh. And he gave the Passover wine, saying its true meaning is his blood. He called this ceremony of the Passover the New Covenant. Why did he say that the Passover bread is his flesh and that the Passover wine is his blood? This scene of the Passover is directly connected to the words written in John chapter 6, verse 54. If they eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, what do they have? Jesus said, they have eternal life. Didn't Jesus say, whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day? According to the words in Luke chapter 22, verse 19 through 20, it is explained that the Passover bread represents Jesus' flesh and the Passover wine represents his blood. Then, eating the Passover bread and drinking the Passover wine mean eating Jesus' flesh and drinking his blood. Isn't this correct? What then is promised to those who keep the Passover? Eternal life is promised to those who keep the Passover. What is a place where only those who have received the promise of eternal life can go? It is the eternal kingdom of heaven. In order to enter the eternal kingdom of heaven, numerous people on this earth go to church on Sunday and celebrate Christmas and Thanksgiving. They set up crosses on top of church steeples and even wear necklaces with cross pendants. By using all kinds of means and methods, they have made great efforts to create their own ways to go to heaven. However, none of these ways are God's way. God has taught us that the day will come when His people will surely receive His teachings. According to the Bible, Jesus has also promised us, only those who have been taught by the Father can come to me. There are the people who obey his teachings by eating the flesh of the Son of Man and drinking his blood, the Passover bread and wine, as they were taught. God has promised to give eternal life to all these people. He called this covenant the New Covenant. Here, the New Covenant means a new promise. It is a new promise that has been made. Even though people ate bread and drank wine a hundred times before, it was not possible for them to walk on the path of eternal life. However, God Himself came to this earth and established this system. What did He establish this system for? Isn't the Passover, which we are keeping right now, a system God established to open the way for us to enter the kingdom of heaven? The Passover we are keeping now is the covenant with the promise of eternal life, making it different from the covenant God established in the time of Moses. According to the Bible, it is called the New Covenant, and the age we are living in is the age of the New Covenant. Since it is the age of the New Covenant, those who have not received the promise of eternal life cannot enter heaven, even though they go to church often, attend early morning worships, pray all night long, and devote themselves to working diligently for God. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, it is written that people will say, Lord, Lord, did we not put forth our toils and make much effort in your name? We have done all these things for you, Lord. We carried out the role of prophets and drove out demons. We also performed many miracles and wonders. However, what will Jesus plainly say to them? He will plainly say, I never knew you. Away from me, you who practice lawlessness. I have not made any promise to you concerning the things you have done. Out of all the things they did, they never did anything in accordance with the promise of eternal life given by God. Isn't this the reason why he rejected them saying, away from me? Today we live in the truth of the new covenant Passover. We should absolutely be proud of this fact. 
It is surprising that the Passover is kept only in Zion and nowhere else. It is also astounding that there is no place on this earth that celebrates the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month of Nisan with bread and wine. When we look back on these circumstances, they are according to God's plan and God's way of administration. There is no other way to receive the promise of going to the kingdom of heaven except through this new covenant. There is no other way. Without the truth of the Passover, there is no way for us to receive eternal life, which God has granted to us. So today, we should give more glory, thanks, and honor to Elohim, God the Father and God the Mother, who have given us the Passover and the teachings of the truth of the New Covenant, and who have opened the way to the eternal kingdom of heaven. We should never become the foolish people by leaving the truth of the New Covenant Passover or losing the promise of eternal life. No matter how much wisdom we have to enable us to do other things, how much knowledge we have, and how steadfast our faith is that it can move huge mountains, all these are meaningless if we do not have eternal life. Isn't this true? Let's read the book of Hebrews chapter 10. The churches in the world that do not know the Passover slander us for keeping the Passover and hinder us from keeping it. Regarding these churches who slander and hinder us, God has given us a warning. Let us turn to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. It reads, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant? What is the blood of the covenant? It is the Passover. It is the blood of the new covenant Passover, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace. What will happen to those who treat the blood of the eternal covenant as an unholy thing? It says that they will be punished. The Bible tells us to seriously think and ask ourselves, how great, intense, and severe will the punishment be for such people? Eternal life cannot be given to those who treat the blood of the covenant as an unholy thing. The kingdom of heaven cannot be given to such people. Therefore, when we think about where we are, we come to realize that we are truly blessed people. As we have met Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, we are able to know the Passover, the New Covenant, all the decrees, regulations, and laws of the New Covenant, as well as Zion, the Kingdom of Heaven, and the way to eternal life. We must never forget the truth of the New Covenant which God has given us, since the path we are walking on is a guaranteed path leading us to Heaven. While the Israelites were walking in the desert, they always forgot God's covenant, rebelled against God, and behaved in an ungodly manner. Each and every day, they continued forsaking His regulations, decrees, and laws. However, we must never become like them, following their examples. We live in the age of the Holy Spirit. After this age, there will be no other age when a chance for us to repent will be given. In terms of the work of salvation, we are living in the age when everything has to be finalized and completed. From this point of view, since we are keeping the new covenant in this age and remaining in the truth of the Passover and in the promise of God's eternal inheritance, the path God has paved for our future is truly a smooth and guaranteed path. Thinking about our glorious future in the Kingdom of Heaven, 
Let us turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 says, So do not. What should we not do? Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Let's continue with verse 36. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive. What will you receive? What He has promised. There are many promises that God has made with us. However, isn't the promise in 1 John chapter 2, verse 25, the promise of eternal life? First, we need the promise of eternal life for the kingdom of heaven to be guaranteed to us. When the kingdom of heaven is guaranteed, the position of the royal priesthood will also be guaranteed. Moreover, we will be accompanied with the promise that we will receive eternal life and blessings with joy every day in heaven, where there is no sorrow or pain. That's why you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. Let's continue with verse 37. It says, for in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. We must not become like the foolish people who shrink back, stumble, and go back to the time they did not believe in God, resulting in their souls being destroyed. I want to ask you to firmly hold on to your faith until the end and maintain the attitude of those who have the faith worthy of the kingdom of heaven. The Passover and the new covenant which we have are of great value. We have the most magnificent truth which even the angels in heaven are amazed by and envious for. Then, we should not live our lives like the people of the world who do not have anything to boast about, should we? We have a mission to carry out. In this age, what mission does God ask us to carry out? Concerning all the people around the world, what does God command us to do? God commands us to preach the gospel to all of them. Truly, we have received the Passover, and we have been approved as the workers of the New Covenant. If so, there is something the workers of the New Covenant must accomplish. We must preach the gospel to all people in the world. On the day when we return to heaven, God will say to us, You, take charge of five cities. You, Take charge of ten cities. Through the parable of the talents recorded in Matthew chapter 25, we can see the scene where God grants cities to His faithful servants, can't we? We can also see the same scene through the parable of the ten minas written in the Gospel of Luke, can't we? Such a glorious day will come very soon. Let us not look at the present time with a narrow perspective. Instead, let us always look to this glorious future. Of course, our life on this earth is important. However, I hope that none of us will become the foolish ones who lose what is eternal because of what is temporary. Hoping you have received eternal life through the Passover we are keeping today, I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.